gospel and she got saved. And the last night, her uh, brother, who was 16 year old, came and got saved. Then they got the phone call that the housing, that they've been assistant housing, that it had, her placement had come so she could leave the battered woman's home. All right. That's our God. Yes, it is. And that they put the tent revival across the street. People who had not heard the gospel. Uh -huh. Praying. Tent revival. And they may not be in Indiana, but they come out of right. Indiana. Yeah. They come out of the heartland to reach. They've been in been in Alabama and they're in Florida and then they're working in Louisiana, Texas, and then they'll be back here in April. And again, I said, you know, my father's house met them and that God says, hey, this you gotta go back. And so I just there's a revival yeah, and the songs were perfect of just the Holy Ghost. It's going to be, it says revival is not just an emotion. It is a life change. Mm -hmm. yes. The fear of the Lord, what's that? The that fear back, of the Lord, yes. We're all going to be changed. Uh -huh. I mean, once we, once he gets on, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's simple terms. Once he comes upon you, that's how scripture says it. And revival is going to happen. In 2023, the word is the fear of the Lord and faith. Those have been, I mean, for the last two months, every time we gather, it comes out the fear of the Lord and faith. And that we, our faith is what's going to heal us. Our faith is what's going to move us forward. Our faith overcomes the fear of the world. That's right. And the fear of the Lord is what keeps us moving forward because we don't want to disappoint him. So we want to do all that we can do that's within our power to be glorifying God. And when you glorify God, the fire is just getting bigger, guys. I mean, it, it may look we like... We lift him up, yeah. scripture says. And all men will be drawn to him. And that's where we're going. Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, February is the month of the heart. Yeah, so love you, Mary. <laughs> love, love you, Mary. Mary. <laughs> love that's you. our theme for February, mm -hmm. the heart heart matters, heart issues. So we are going to, uh, Dennis, could you pass me my Bible over there? <laughs> we're doing something a little different again today. We're just going to talk. I don't know where this is going to lead. Richard, I'm calling you up. <laughs> Come on. Go for it. <laughs> don't even pull the chair over here. I'm putting glasses on so I can walk. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to go because when Richard gets excited, he, he might be jumping up out of that chair. Sure, well, I, I can tell you I won't be. Hallelujah. I feel like a kid in a high chair. Yeah. <laughs> Your little feet are touching. Well, I guess if God feeds me, I'm, I'm in a good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, a babe in Christ. Yeah, it's like you'll eat anything. Okay, we are going to be in James chapter 4 today. We were in James chapter 3 last last Sunday, but uh, it talks about wars a little bit. And you know, war, war's been going on since the very beginning, Cain and Abel. But we have wars all the time, it seems like. <laughs> You're not allowed to laugh at Richard. <laughs> Your feet are dangling. <laughs> She's laughing. And uh, uh, it's estimated that, you know, in some, in like Vietnam, we've lost one, 108 million people. And a lot of the wars, billions of people. And we lose people all the time. And when you're thinking about, um, the first part of this talks about warring in your members. Well, it's not members of the church. It's about you and yourself. I'm going to read uh, down to, I think, 7 or 8. Yeah, 7. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. 
you are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your own pleasures. You adulterous, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no uh, purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us. But he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And the next one is draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. Uh, James is all about spiritual maturity. And Warren uh, Worsby, I think that's how you say his name, he said that um, spiritual maturity is one of the greatest needs in the church today. Too many churches are playpens for babies instead of workshops. You see, the church is supposed to be about equipping the saints. Yes training them, discipling them. We're not just supposed to come every Sunday and meet. We're supposed to be growing. Yes. Maturity. And when we start warring with one another, we're not growing. We're defeating the purpose. And you know, I like this little clip. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever watched Taken, but I watched it last night. Probably shouldn't because it had some bad words in it, but uh, at the end, he tells this guy that this they they stole his daughter and was going to put her into trafficking, sex trafficking, and he was a CIA agent and he he uh, trained special forces, I guess something like that. So he tells the guy that I'll find you and I'll kill you if you don't release my daughter. So. I took that, and he, he went out and fought his best and, and did everything he had to do to get his daughter back. And he finally got his daughter back. And that is a picture of how much Jesus loves us. He will do whatever it takes to get you back. He will do whatever it takes to win you. But, um, you know, he'll fight the fight. Uh, you you want to know what your biggest enemy is? Your biggest enemy. The biggest one you got. Yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Ron, you want to come up here a minute? <laughs> Just so you know. Look at that guy in the mirror. Uh, stomach. Look at that guy in the mirror. <laughs> you're fighting he's the one you're fighting yeah i asked the lord who to call up he said you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yep yep it is he's saying yep he knows yeah, he's <laughs> okay yep. he's your enemy that one right there our self-talk yeah yes yeah you tell we tell ourselves oh i can't do that get self out of the room oh i can't do I can't you. teach anybody anything. You can't. Yeah, it takes God. Yeah, yeah you can. Interesting. You got a lot to teach. Yeah. yeah. The Holy Spirit will use you. Yes. And uh, we just need to go forward and, and not be stuck mm -hmm. on these things. Yeah. Step out in faith. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Step out in faith. Gotta overcome us. Gotta grow. Okay, Richard, I know you're busting. No, I just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, when, you step away, when you step out, make sure God is wanting you to yes. step out. Yes. Uh, you 
you can't do nothing on your own to make it work. Yeah. Like I said once before, uh, if you step on your own, if you step on out on your own, it's like a loaf of bread that Bill Dews got. The bread is still bread, but it ain't no good because it's smelling. God's word is no good unless the Holy Ghost is there putting the spice on the word. Yeah, yes. you know, salting it a little bit. Yeah. Right. Uh, did any of you think about what Roxanne said about that ship floating and the angel was guarding and all that? Now, personally, when I looked at that, I saw the church and the angels protecting the church floating out into the world, out into a sea of sin, and the darkness was the evil and yeah. the sin that was in the world that the angels were protecting that church. Yeah. Oh, that's because, good. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. there's only one church, yes. and it belongs Amen. to God. Yeah. That's right. we're, we, we've got a lot of names of churches, but there's only one church, and that Amen. belongs to God. And, and I looked at it when she was talking about it. Well, that's just the church going out into the world, and the angels protecting the church, keeping them safe, and the darkness is the sin in this world that the church is supposed to try to overcome. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the way I got it. Okay, okay. <laughs> the first part of that says we war in our memories, uh, in our memory. Members. members. Yeah, I'll get it right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the problem is, uh, the Bible says that we always will. Yeah. It says the spirit will war against the flesh and the flesh yeah. against the spirit. It's who, it's what you let overcome that counts. If you let the spirit overcome, you're okay. But if you let the darkness and the sin overcome, mm -hmm. then you'll be right back where you was. We were in the memory. And some people think, well, I had a fight today and I just don't want to do this or that because, you know, I don't feel good. I've had a The Bible says we're going to fight against darkness yeah. and against principalities, yeah. against evil in high places. The Bible says that. But he says we have not because we ask not. Not because we war. But we simply did not ask. And when we did ask, we asked not for God's glory, but we asked right. to add it to ourselves. Yeah. And if we add it to ourselves, then we are sinners. Yeah, this is what's called double-minded. Uh, yeah. You know, this part here talking about people. The other part over in about Levin talking about the church. Mm -hmm. How people talk about each other and what they say yeah. and this and that. See, I read in that where it says, that we talking about us judging. Are we judges? No, we're who, not. Who of us has lived a good enough life mm -hmm. that we can say somebody else is wrong? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, by the fruit you'll know, mm -hmm. and as long as they're doing what God wants them to, who are we to judge them? Where was we at when people were praying for us and wanting us to be saved? Amen. What were we yeah. doing when, when, when uh, people and our mothers and fathers went to the church house and said, Lord, save my children? Save my grandchildren. Yes. Where was we at in the world? Yeah, come on. So we're just as bad. Yes, we are. We're just saved by grace. Yes. That's the only thing that difference between us and the world. We're saved by grace. And God yes, made us separated from the world. Yeah. Uh, we're not to speak about each other. Because remember last week when I was uh, teaching, I, I, I brought out the fact that, you know, God created each and every one of us. When we talk about a brother or sister, criticize them all the time, bring them down. We are talking about something that God created in the image of himself. We've got to be aware of our words. Our words are power. They're, they're life and death. We've got to speak positively, not negatively. And that's something I'm learning. <laughs> You know, and along with every one of you, we got to speak positive words. We yes. got to speak bold words. Yes. We can't be afraid of the enemy. We got to kick him in the face. Yes. Uh, we talk about uh, this this uh, word of God. We, we we preach about it. We talk about it. We teach it. But sometimes we actually don't put it in our own heart and in our own mind. Walk it out. Uh, we're not. Uh, <laughs> A lot of times when I preach, I preach because God has straightened me up from something I preached on. Yeah, yeah. Because he told me, hey, bud, that's wrong. Yeah. You're doing that wrong. A lot of pastors get their messages and, uh, that yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, but he said you kill. You know, people look at that and says, well, I ain't kill nobody. Have, ain't you? Have you yeah, talked about somebody who made them feel so bad they didn't come back to church? No, have you? Yeah. Have you? Have you? 
talked about them so bad that they just uh, stay home and don't do anything. You can kill a person with oh, your yeah. tongue. Yeah. Yeah. You can kill a person spiritually. Words are powerful. And if, powerful. If, if you do that, then you're guilty of killing them or murder, in other words, spiritually. <clears throat> Not physically, but spiritually. Uh -huh. You can kill a person with your words. Uh -huh. You remember the old saying? Don't throw stone. rocks if you live in a glass house. <laughs> well, we ain't got no right to throw rocks at nobody else because we lived in glass houses at the time. Yeah. The only reason we're where we're at today because Jesus had mercy on us. Yeah. Yeah. That old saying, sticks and stones and breaks yeah. your bones, but words never hurt you, that is a lie yeah. from hell. Yeah. Yeah. hell. Because words are the one thing that tears oh, the yeah. hearts. You can hurt a person with yeah. words the same as you can with a rock. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worse, deeper scars. Yeah. Worse. So, what do we need to do as a church to grow? Speak lovingly to one another. Amen. Build each other up in our faith. Encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Don't Just speak see. negative words to each other. The scripture says, seek. Seek God first and all yeah. this other. Yeah. If we seek yeah. God with our whole heart and our whole mind and our whole body, all this love that we're supposed to have all this knowledge we're supposed to have, all this forgiveness we're supposed to have, will be added to us. Yeah, yes. amen, amen, yes. <clears throat> we don't have to work for it, he'll give it no, to he'll us. he'll give it to us. When we seek him with our whole heart, what happens is, see, we want to do our own thing. Yes. We want what we want because we're spoiled people. Yes. Yeah. We, we want to do our own thing with our yeah. uh, so. pleasures. That's why I use the mirror. That was an example. That's, self, That's yeah. our biggest problem is ourself. Uh -huh. You know that song and I brought it up before that Pink sang, Don't Let Me Get Me. That's that's a good song. Don't let me get me, because we're our own worst enemy. I put myself down so much and then I quit doing that. You know, because I Lord. learned Thank to quit Lord. doing that, to quit mm -hmm. speaking those words because that those words are power because when you say them long enough you start believing them yeah, yeah. you just ask a child that, that a mother spoke to the child oh you'll never amount to anything mm -hmm. you're just like your dad you'll yeah. never amount to anything you ask a child that's that's grown up now and she still hears those words yes all the time parents can destroy their kids they don't even know they're doing it how powerful words can direct our future. And I feel like that's what God is calling out of these two chapters that we've done is our, we've got to get control of our tongue yes. because it directs our future. It's yes. not about just talking about our brothers and sisters. It's about what we're saying. Think before we speak. Choose your words wisely because you can't take it back after you've spoken. We are what we are by the grace of God. Amen. That's it. Not yeah. because of anything we did, not by anything that we worked for, not by anything we bought. We are what we are by the grace of God. Amen. Mercy. And those words will last forever. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I think we have to deal with as well is not only words because they're powerful, but actions as well. Yeah. Amen. Uh, which I think we've talked about the uh, direction we're in this briefing. Did, I, did you ever talk about that? What I went through. Well, mm -hmm. I, was, I was in the Air Force, and I was stationed in Hawaii, and I went to this thing called the Russian Awareness Briefing, and we went in there, and, and this guy come out in a full dress Russian uniform, faced the audience, and for an hour and a half, he just railed and railed and railed about how bad America was. Blacks still picking cotton in the South, cowboys shooting Indians out West, Chinese still building railroads, on and on and on and on and on. And finally stopped, he introduced himself as Captain So-and-so with this Air Force Department and stuff. And he said that the, the reason the Russian people are so scared of us because this is what they've been fed for the last 70 years. They don't know anything else. So, and I, I relate that to growing up in an abusive household. If your form of love that you see your mom or your dad give your mom is I love you, I love you, I love you, what's the kid going to do? I love you, I love you, I love you. Uh -huh. You know, so our actions also have to speak volumes as well as our words do. Amen. Because pe people see us from off in the distance and like, oh, you're a Christian and you're at the club drinking and partying and chasing after guys? Yeah. I don't want to be that type of Christian. And yeah. it turns them off of Christ. It turns them away. 
Yeah. So the people see us unawares. That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to be aware of our actions as well as the words that we speak. Because the tongue is a powerful weapon. Yes, uh -huh. it is. Uh -oh. yep. It is about our actions, too. Because yeah. people watch us all the time. Action is like a picture. Yeah. Action just like speak a mouth a word and saying it just speak one. Uh -huh. Just like this morning, I was trying to hide that I wasn't feeling good, so I smiled. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody called you out. On it. You're hurting, aren't you? Yeah. You know, sometimes we think we're hiding something, but we're awesome. not hiding it. No. People know. <laughs> Words are like toothpaste. Once it's out, you can't put it back in the tube. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And it makes a mess. Yeah. Right. That's true. Just saying. We, we, we have to watch what we do and say in front of people. We simply, because, and even if we live the best we can, yeah. even if we yeah, live as close as we can, they're going to talk about you. Yeah. They're going to say they're not a Christian because they don't understand what a Christian really is. They don't understand when you're saved. You can make a mistake. Yes. Yeah, and God will forgive you yes. because the Bible says He will. Yes. You can, you can, it's not the battle that you lose that counts, but it's the war that you win. Amen. The right. United States has lost many battles, yes. but they've always won the war. Yeah. Christians yeah, will not lose some battles yeah, but we're as all long as they win the war. That's yes. what counts. Yeah. You know, we make mistakes as we grow, too. And, uh, we've got to give ourselves grace and mercy yeah. because we give it to everybody. We need to give ourselves grace yes. and mercy when we make a mistake because that's all part of growing. Yeah. It's, our, it's all part of maturing in Christ. Um, like like yesterday, I gave a, a, a fellow a word, but I didn't choose my words the right way. And, you know, that's part of growing and it's part of, you know, learning to think before you speak and uh when we're when we're doing that when god has given us something we've got to really think about how to say it because see that's coming out of us god may have gave it to us but we're the ones who who uh, pass it on you know that old story that the story grows as it goes down the line well we need to pass it on how it ha how god gave it to us and and really try to Prophetically, I'm speaking. Really try to uh, choose the right words to say wisely. Um, yeah. Because a word can change your life. Yes. It can. We all have a destiny. We all have a purpose and a plan. God has called for us. And if we sit on our doves and we don't go about doing that, then shame on us. Yeah, because yeah. we've got to grow. I, I probably yeah. criticize myself more than I do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> My wife keeps saying, oh, you're right. Yeah. Uh, but simply because I know myself, and I know, you know, you, you know what you're capable of doing, you know what you can do. You know and sometimes weakness. when you fall short of that, you want to, you think, you know, that was kind of stupid. I could have done better. Yeah. You know, I always get home after I preach and say, I should have I could have put this that. in, I could have put that in, I could have done this, I could have done that. But you see, then you got to remember, you did what God wanted you to do, not yeah, what you wanted to do. Because sometimes you want to put in more than God wants you to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I just look at it like God let out what he wanted to do. And every once in a while, my wife reminds me of that. Yes. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> oh, she's a great help. Remember our studies together and stuff. She's That's good. And, uh, Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? This is different. It's round table yeah. time. Uh, over in the the eleventh chapter that we we, we talked oh. about. Speak against. Do not speak against one another, right. brethren. He who speaks against a a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. There's only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you who judge your neighbor? Well, you know how to put that. Who are you? Yeah, who are you? In other words, 
who you who gave you the right to judge somebody else in your life because you were just as bad off as he was before God saved you. You know, when, when Jesus talked to his father, he said, Father, I'm not praying that you take them out of the world. I'm just praying you'll keep them. Yes. Say, while they're in the world. Yes. See, he did, he did <clears throat> and, and people say, now we're, we're, we're fighting this and we're doing this and I just don't know. Well, of course we're going to fight. We're in the world. Yes. We don't even belong here. We don't. Yes. Yes. So what makes you think, we're trespassing. Yes. So what makes you think we're not going to battle the evil that's in this world because we don't belong here. Yeah. And I got news for you. If you die and go to that lake of fire, you're trespassing on Satan's property then. Yeah. So they said it was made, made for Satan and his angels. Yeah. Not uh, human beings. Yeah. So yeah. you're trampling over the mercy of Christ when you go there. Uh, uh, that scripture says in verse 14, it says, you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Make your life matter. That little dash. That little, 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 little dash. Little, little, little dash. dash. When you were born and when you weren't. That's your life. It's just a little dash. It's, it, you know, <laughs> you just it, it's not what you're doing when you're born. It's not what, what you're doing. It's mm -hmm. what you do right now. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, it's like your obituary. He made his dash count. He made his life count. He gave it up, and he could, and he shared his faith so yeah. others could come yeah. to the kingdom. And Amen. You'd be around Amen. that man, you would know it. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't afraid to share it he and share it. To share. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to share it like anywhere, it. anywhere where we're at. We shouldn't be afraid to share God. We shouldn't be afraid for people to know we're a Christian. <coughs> Well, I hope we're not going to be able to put on my tombstone as a Christian. Christian. Yeah. 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 There I put that. I want to follow her Christ. Yeah. That's where I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, we make mistakes. Yeah. Sure, we make mistakes. Yeah. 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 Y
go to a big restaurant, you sit down and you order your dinner and they bring it to you and you eat. Uh, well, church is like that too. You get out there, you get hungry in the world, you're out there in the world, you're fighting every day, you're fighting with spirits, you're fighting with evil, you're fighting with sinners, and you want not, not uh, fighting physically, I'm talking about spiritually, you're trying to live, and then you come to church, and God feeds you a big dinner from the Bible, and it strengthens you, so you can go out there and do it all over again. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just like eating food. The food that we eat at home is for this years for the spiritual body. Amen. And sometimes you get a big steak by by being here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. God'll give you a big old tea bone or something out of the Bible. And, and when you eat that you you begin to chat sometimes. Oh, you know? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and that's yeah. what that's what going to church and hearing the word of God is, is getting fed that you might be able to be strong enough to combat the outside world when you're out there. Mm -hmm. That's good. And you got you got you got to get hungry every once in a while. I know I do. Uh, when she fixes me a big meal, I go in there and eat. I'm not hungry. When God fixes you a big meal and you come here and you eat, you're not hungry. When yeah. you drive, like I said before, mm -hmm. if you get the meat of the Bible here at this church, Amen. the devil the devil can't tempt you with Twinkies. Right, right, right. Uh, he'll give you all the dessert you want because it don't matter. But you can't live on dessert. Okay? God gives you the meat of the Bible so you can mm -hmm. live. And you can't live. They will give you dessert. He'll give you Twinkies and maybe a few of those other cake, cupcakes, stuff like that. But you can resist that if you know the word and know what the meat of the Bible is and how how to live the Bible. You can live that way. You don't have to take the Twinkies from devil. Yeah. Amen. You know, and, and to get back to what you said about what I said yesterday, uh, um, we're supposed to be Christ-like in everything that we do, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Christ did not just do his miracles on the Sabbath day. He right. did it seven days a week. That's so right. if we're supposed to be Christ, like we yes. got to do the same darn thing. We have yes. to do it seven days a week. Mm -hmm. We do not stop. Yeah. And I've been trying to find the scripture and I can't find it because it's just like a verse, maybe two verses, like the entire Bible on like 17,000 verses or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the verse says that you, you talk to somebody about their sin, if they don't if they don't agree with you then you move on you don't worry about it right you know right. Uh, which which to me in, in in today's world when we're looking at everything that's going on mm -hmm. and the thing that comes to mind is <laughs> nobody knows what gender they are anymore yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay and, and they got this hate speech thing going that if you say something against a gay person you can go to jail and, and yeah. all that well, you know, I, I can talk to a gay person about your lifestyle is wrong, but at the same time, to me, the life of a rapist is wrong. Yes. Right. The life of a thief is wrong. Yes. wrong. The lifestyle of a guy that cheats on his taxes is wrong. Yes. So, yes. yeah, am I going to be sent to jail for all those people too? Mm -hmm. I like Pepsi instead of Coke. I'm going to go to jail for that. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So where does it all end? Right. You know? right. Uh, and, and, I, I, when I talk to gay people, it's like, you know, you, you have a wrong lifestyle and tell them like that. Mind you, if you want to live that lifestyle, knock yourself out. Yeah. I really don't care. It's all up to you. But I feel that if you keep it up, you're not going to wind up in the spot you want to wind up in. Right. You know, and that, to me, that kind of lets me off the hook. It's not a hate speech thing. Because it's like, enjoy the life you're living. Knock yourself out. It's wrong. I have a sister's team, by the way, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. When they talk about don't put your, don't cast your <laughs> pearl before the swine, right? He's simply telling us then, don't stand and, and keep yeah, the bringing right. Jesus up and them them walking over top of it. Right. Yeah. Just quit it, go on. Yeah. yeah. Because you're just you're just putting the pearl before and Jesus yeah. is the pearl he's talking about, and you're just casting him before the swine and they're just walking over it. He said, don't do that. Just yeah. go on. Walk on. Remember in one scripture he said, shake the yeah, dust off the, your feet. Yeah. Amen. You see, see Jesus coming back to the sky. Look me up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, don't keep trying in other yeah. words. Because they've already rejected it. Well, so. he said you can't argue with a fool. A fool doesn't yeah. want to hear truth. Yeah. yeah. So there is no sense in, in exhausting yourself and exhausting them. There's certain people that can't be saved and there's people who won't be saved. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to keep moving and you're not accountable. You gave them the gospel, you sowed the seed. Where did the seed fall? Move on to somebody else. Like, yeah. Me I can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't think of it. 
keyword. <laughs> that, that, that witch seed, what God could do, is still run. Yeah. Right away. And took all of it. Yeah. Now, God's a, big, God's a big God. Yes, you know, he is. Some, we made God small, but he's not small at all. He's a big God. So. Yeah. Be small. And we do, everything. we do make him yes. that way. We put him in a box. Yeah. And he doesn't fit in a box. He's right. so big, he should stick out of us. Uh, yeah. Other people should see him in us. I, yeah. I like the the uh, symbolism of trying. You ever pack a suitcase that just, if you've got too much in there and you can't get it closed, you know, it just won't close. That's how it should be on us. We, it can't close on us because we're too full of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just too full of God. Let's close right now in prayer. And, Anybody have anything else they want to say? Or? No? Oh, One okay. thing, it's hard to sit here and talk like this without doing anything. Woohoo! Well, Richard, you'll get your chance next week. It's your turn. Well, I told you, I told you weeks ago. Oh, God's got us. Uh, yeah. But I'm really glad that uh, God seen fit to save me. Amen. Yes. Amen. And save all of you. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. That's uh, that's the thing that, and we we sometimes we forget that. Yeah. God chose him. Yeah. He chose us. He didn't. We ain't go hunting for him. He came hunting for us. A lot of people say, "Well, I'm real glad God found me." No, yeah. I'm for God. I'm glad I found that He found me, and not I found Him. with me and say, what are you doing? You know you don't belong here. And I'd be up there dancing like a crazy woman. I, I <laughs> he'd be talking to me. Yeah. Right away, he'd be saying, you don't belong here. You know you don't belong here. Get back where you belong. Yeah. Finally, I gave my heart back to him again. You know, God never, he chases us down. He, he doesn't let us go. Well, All the world out there, everybody in this world belongs to him. Yeah. They just refuse to accept it. Yeah. The, 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 the prodigal son, if you read that and how the prodigal son come back and the one that stayed home got mad. Yeah. Well, you know how mad the Jews got when Jesus, when they started preaching to the Gentiles? In the Bible, they started preaching to them. You know, they, because they, they thought they lived the Christian Savior, life. right? They yeah. thought they lived the Christian life all their life, and here he was taking the Gentiles in. Yeah. Remember how mad they got? Oh, yeah. He sat down with the folks and clean. sinners and ate dinner. Mm -hmm. Why is he eating dinner? Because they thought they were better than everybody. Yeah. Well, you know, some Christians in this day and time oh, think yes. they got seniority yes. and they're better than they yeah. think they're more spiritual than everybody but else. But everybody's nobody's sick. got seniority in this bunch. No. no. God's called you to do something. You don't need nobody else's permission. You go do what God's called you to do. That's right. And we'll close in prayer right there. Father, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for this wonderful conversation, Father. Um, and Lord, what you're doing here, we just want to praise you and lift you up for what you're doing in our lives and in this church body, Lord. All over the world, Lord. Yes. Lord. We ask that you touch those who need a touch from you, Father God. Draw us to you. Jesus, yes. name we pray. Amen. Amen. If anybody needs prayer, you know I'm here to pray with you. Just come on up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard will be preaching next week. I'm really glad you guys are going to see me. <laughs>